There's nothing more functional than picking heavy things off the ground and moving it. So regardless of the what the latest infomercial Johnny come lately poodle dick on this big screen of you know Tinsel Town or whatever is trying to sell you, there's nothing more functional than picking up heavy weight and moving with it. And the way you get that functionality is with strongman training. That is the, you know, there's good, better, and best. And for functional training, strongman training is the best. You know, so I love using strongman training with my tactical athletes and stuff. You know, that's what they're gonna encounter. They need to be able to do that stuff. However, if, you know, you're a tactical athlete, if you're lucky, you get de you get hurt, you got desk duty, and you're not doing what you wanna do, but at least you're getting paid. You know, if you're a professional athlete, you get hurt, you know, they might, you know, put you on the injured reserve list. So we don't want that to happen. We have to do this safely. So deadlift with a double overhand grip, okay? I've been to more powerlifting meets than Carter has pills. And the, the, why I'm telling you this is the most common injury deadlifting, if you ask somebody on the, on the streets or, you know, the local uh, redneck bar turn, you know, local trailer turn redneck bar kind of place or anywhere in between, what they're gonna tell you is the most common injury deadlifting, it, you know, is your back, that's not true. The most common serious injury I've seen deadlifting is torn biceps because people lift with that over under, you know, mixed grip and that exposes the biceps. So for strongman training, usually in the deadlift events, they let you wear straps, okay? For bodybuilding and hypertrophy training, you should be straps because eventually when you're doing that kind of work, the grip is going to be the limiting factor. So it's a, from that safety standpoint, we can go, you know, you can use a hook grip or you can strap up because you're gonna get the, you're gonna get the grip work when you train your farmer's walks and things like that. So I'm not saying like, you know, be the goofball, you know, 90s bodybuilder, you know, banana hammock, like Smith machine bench pressing, rolling the straps on and, you know, the big hoopla. We don't need to do all that crap. Just when you're deadlifting, wear straps. It's gonna be more symmetrical development. Your grip's not gonna limit you for a sake of hypertrophy or, or endurance besides the grip. And it's just gonna make, make things safer. So if you're not doing a powerlifting meet, either wear straps, use a hook grip, okay? Next, ne be careful. Okay, so never flip a, a wet tire is what I always say. It's, you know, that's that can be, I've seen that happen when people get hurt and you do not wanna be flipping wet tires or, or doing any of the strongman events on a real, you know, Oh, so the next one would be um, pay attention to friction. So we'll tie these two together. Friction is what you're training on. So if you are, um, you know, trying to do a sandbag, you know, medley or something, and you're really tired and it's really slippery on the ground, it's been raining and you know there's oil on the ground or something, that's problematic. Okay, you can get hurt. With and and with a tire flip, I've I've actually seen this at a contest where it was wet and somebody got hurt. So you really want to avoid that. Think about if you're training outside. You have one of those loadable Husa felt stones you carry that are made out of metal. You're in, you know, Houston, Texas, 105 degrees with 90% humidity. You're going to drop it probably and you're going to break your foot. So everything has a risk to benefit ratio. So we want to push the envelope as hard as possible without going too far on that risk side and taking away from the benefit side. Because, yeah, it does. It is, is going to make you mentally tougher to, to not, you know, to, to train 105 with a Husa felt stone. Not, of course it will. But that that little bit you get from it's not worth the whole risk in the process just how you know another one is people say you know back in the day football coaches wouldn't let players drink water that you know that that there was no benefit to that i agree i don't agree with that i think it's crazy however there was a benefit to mental toughness i mean i'm sorry some you know some fullbacks not gonna come out of the game saying give me some vagicil if he's you know practice four hours in the heat with no water. I mean, that's gonna make you tough. I mean, not good. I, I don't recommend doing this because people can die and, and all sorts of things. And, you know, we don't wanna see that happen. But I mean, to say there's absolutely no benefits, not true, just out doing what I said, there would be some benefit, but the potential risk, just how like the football practices, the benefits are tougher. The risk is you got a good chance of dying. So you wanna just be, build your toughness other ways kind of thing, okay? Next, think technique over speed. What I and eventually, if you are, especially if you're not competing, if you're not competing, you have to think technique because a lot of times in a competition, it might be, hey, you're lifting this 250 pound stone over, you know, some sort of barrier like 48 inches, 50 inches in the air, boom, over it. So you have to do as many reps as you can, say in 60 seconds. 
And if you're capable of, say, lifting 450 pounds over that, that's a very light weight to you. So you better be hauling ass to get as many reps as possible to, to beat the, the oncoming fatigue and just get as many reps as you can. So when you're doing that, you're not setting up perfectly because it's, but here's what you can do. You, first off, you're not competing that this is a no brainer. You have to like, if you're picking up a, you know, a stone, a sandbag, you can tear a bicep or something, get everything locked in and do it. Okay. This is not taking away from your explosivity. Like when you actually pick it up and go over to the barrier, you do explode, but like, you know, you, you go to farmer's walks, a quick walk, not trying to run. Like it say, if you can do 400 pounds in each hand, the contest is 250. You can sprint with it. Not a good idea. You know, if you're just training for recreational or, or occupational purposes for that matter. But what I'm telling you here is if you train the way I'm saying and think technique over speed, eventually the speed's going to be better. Cause all of a sudden, like, you know, you decide in our strongman contest, you pick the sandbag up, you put it over the bar. You've done it correctly every single time. So now when you got to haul ass, you will haul ass like you need to, but you're going to haul ass with perfect technique. That's where the benefit comes. Okay. So you got to keep that in mind. Techni technical failure is failure is the next point. Think if you, if you can't do something in a contest, it doesn't matter how you lift it up. If you, you know, somehow could like, you know, bring the log up and like bounce it off your knees really hard and on top of your head and locked it out. That's okay. You just have to get it up, but that's not how you train. So anytime you fail technically view that as failure and dial things back. The only time to make this not the case is if, if it's in a competition and you're competing to win. Okay. And finally think in terms of making reasonable jumps in your progress. What I mean by that is, no one's gonna go into the gym today, max on the bench press, say it, at 200 pounds, then attempt to do 400 pounds, you know, three weeks later. That can happen to strongmen because you become more proficient in the event. So I want you, I want you to take smaller jumps, like 10, a pretty big jumps, still like 10% jumps. So if you're deadlifting 500, that'd be 550 the next workout. Then after that, 615, so on. So it's, not, I'm not saying don't take jumps, but if you're doing yoke, say you're not really familiar with the yoke and you're moving with it. You got 500 pounds on all of a sudden you feel proficient on it you want to try 900 in two weeks that's you get your body used to it just take those 10 percent jumps do it safely master technique and you know strongman will have you ready for anything